Hello and welcome to this episode of the Industrial Engineering Notebook. Today's topic is engineering stress strain. This is super important in materials engineering and in particular in continuum mechanics. Go check out the stress videos for more information on that. So what is engineering strain? It is the kind of strain that we use in engineering. It is different than true strain, which is a topic for a different video. It is the percent of the original length that a material is stretched. So did you extend that object's length by 10% or 5% or 2% or 50%? That's engineering strain. A quick example, we got a cylinder here. It is 0.25 meters tall. Then you stretch to 0.1 strain. Strain doesn't really have units. It's more like you strain it by 10%. And then you're gonna end up with a cylinder that's a little bit skinnier and a little bit longer. And we're just gonna be looking at the length here. So it'll be 0.25 meters plus 10% of the original length. So plus 0.025, which equals 0.275 meters. So if we want an equation for engineering strain, we'll take the Greek letter epsilon and give it a little subscript E there so we know it's engineering strain. And it is equal to the length after you stretch it minus the original length, which we'll call L naught divided by the original length, L naught. And I'm gonna put that in a box because it's important. And there's the definition of our variables there. And we can see that this pretty much checks out. So we'll plug it in backwards here. Our current length would be 0.275 meters minus our original length, which was 0.25 meters divided by our original length. And we find that this equals 0 0.1, which was the strain that we started with. So let's see why this is important. It is important because I said so, but also because sometimes you have a sample of a material and it's in this funny looking shape here. And there's a special machine that you can put a sample like this in. And that machine will slowly increase the strain for this material. So engineering strain will increase 1%, 2%, 3%, whatever. All the while, it's going to measure the force that this material resists that pulling apart with. But in material science, force often isn't enough. So what we wanna do is divide that force by the original cross-sectional area. So if you cut a slice out of the sample right here, this kind of, it's the area of that circle. And it's the original area of that circle. And force divided by area is gonna give us our engineering stress. That's little sigma and then a subscript E. It is engineering stress because we're dividing by the original cross-section area. True stress is different. Something that is super interesting is that no matter what material you use, it follows a general kind of trend when you plot this. We have our engineering strain on the x-axis, our engineering stress on the y-axis, and if you threw that sample into the machine, you'd quickly see that it looks something like this. The, the stress with which the material resists the change in strain, it'll start out nice and linear like this, and then it'll hit a point and it'll start to round out a bit. And then it'll kind of peak, and then it'll kind of round on down, and then it's gonna fracture. So that, that little X there, this X is, is the fracture point, and that's when you've broken your material. So every material kind of follows this general pattern. Some fracture up here and some take a much longer time, or you might have the same material, but at different temperatures and pressures, it'll perform differently. But this is one way to identify some of the unique properties of your material. And this is an important point here when it goes from linear to not so linear anymore. This area of strain is called the elastic region. Because when you strain your metal, whatever material it is up to this point, and then you let go, it'll go back to its original shape. If you strain it past this point, then you've hit the plastic region. It's called the plastic region because once you stretch it to a strain in this region here, it's not going back to the original shape anymore. It's staying right where you put it. It might retract a little bit, but it's definitely not going back to the original shape that we had here. And the plastic region ends here when you fracture your material. And at this point, at the top of this little curvy part, the material is going to start to neck and you'll actually be able to see this. So the center of that material will start to get real, real thin. And that's why it was important that we specified we were using the original cross-sectional area because the cross-sectional area here is going to be a lot smaller. 
but it's also going to be a lot harder to measure, which is why in engineering stress, we just stick with the original cross-sectional area. And then eventually this will get so thin that it snaps. And if you have a really strong material, it'll make a loud noise, which is always really fun. This is important in manufacturing, especially if you're doing quality tests. If you want to know the material that your factory is making is strong enough, this is a kind of test that you'll want to do. It can also be important to understand where the plastic region of a material is because part of your manufacturing process might be to bend or break something, which means you'll need to know you'll need to put in at least this much strain or at least that much strain to make that happen. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to see more of these videos, you can let me know that by subscribing. And if you have questions, you can put them in the comments.